So if you could please say yes, it's okay to record. Yes, I appreciate it. Is it. Okay. <laughs> and that way we can send those out to everyone that have registered that maybe haven't joined us uh, on the call, but <laughs> everyone's going to get this recording and you're going to want it because tonight is about managing your energy or today, if you're in India or on the other places that I keep flying around to, but um, basically uh, you're going to get a recording uh, from an email and I want to be doing a little bit of a more esoteric ethereal type of thing tonight because of we're talking about energy. Bah, bah, bah. So a lot of times I do subconscious beliefs or we go into the subconscious with our power hours. Those of you who are essence of being graduates, you know who you are, you know that we that's where we go a lot of the time for a lot of our other workshops and programs. But tonight, it's all about that higher vibes energy and how to basically manage it. And oftentimes because of what's been happening, I felt like it would be important just to find out where you guys are because we're creating a vortex of people here and finding out the, I'm going to give you a meditation actually. So the recording is going to be really important. So you could listen to this meditation later on and I'm going to be giving tools on how to manage your energy. Is that cool? Yay! Hey, yay! I see all my familiar, I do see a lot of familiar faces. Hi, Rob! Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in a hundred years. Hi, Gail! Hi, Inga! <laughs> Hi! <laughs> welcome, welcome! Thank you. And Vanessa and Elizabeth and Marcella, are you coming to EOB? It's next weekend, girlfriend. All right. Essence of Being, by the way, is uh, we're doing it in Atlanta. Uh, next weekend, March 24th through the 26th. If you haven't done it yet, come play with us. If you have, come play with us. Um, it's our flagship uh, workshop, play shop that I've been doing 30, it's our 30th year. <laughs> Yay, 30 years of EOB and 40 some odd years in this field. So, hey, you know, we're getting there <laughs> one day. One day, hello, Patty. Hi, Deanna. And hello, Colleen and Tell. I'm not sure who Tell is, but oh. Okay. Hi there. All right. So uh, again, tonight we're going to be doing a little more ethereal type of stuff along with managing your energy and doing a meditation. So you might want to take some notes. Um, we won't be doing too much digging around in the subconscious, but you never know with me what's going to happen so hang tight uh anybody have anything that they want to share before we start <clears throat> all right no okay and you can mute yourselves uh and I, you know me i like to talk so i like to hear you talk in other words i like convo conversations so for sure uh you can unmute yourself when uh, you have something you want to share or questions or anything like that for sure so uh, managing our energy tonight, I think is going to be about, because we've been coming out of this pandemic, yeah? We've been coming out of isolation. We've been coming out of perhaps being with people all of a sudden, or maybe you're 100% maybe you're right back in it, or maybe you never were isolated, but some people were sequestered. And so there's a, a plethora of experiences that people have had through this whole last three years. Would you agree? Has it been three years, 2020? Anyway, it's been a while. So even though if you're going to the gas station or going to restaurants now or going to the grocery store, um, being with family again, uh, being with people again and connecting, I, I'm just curious, have any of you felt any different from pre-pandemic and now as far as your personal space goes? Have you felt a little difference or just kind of questioning about personal space, perhaps? And maybe when you're greeting people, Mary, do you want to say something? You look like you're going to say something. I did. Thanks for calling on me. So I did want to tell you that I am going to Spain for three weeks uh, in a few weeks to walk the Camino to the Santiago with my brother. I'm a little apprehensive about the energy because it's like family stuff. Family. Yeah, so I want to make sure that I'm managing 
my energy the best way I can to Perfect. serve the purpose and the intention. Perfect. We're going to definitely talk about that, about family and about people and how to manage your energy so you don't absorb things that maybe you don't want to absorb. Okay, absolutely. So thank you for sharing that. Anybody else have anything they want to share before we start? Okay. All right. I've got my chat. Open. All right. So yeah, I, I think fear and anxiety and those types of things that come up around perhaps meeting people again or talking to them in person and being with them sometimes. Um, maybe your personal space has just shrunk or maybe it's grown. I don't know. And what I mean by that is oftentimes we have that personal space. It could be an inch to our face or it could be maybe two feet. So your personal space usually is around an inch to two feet, depending on you. Okay. And then when you get the intimate space, what I mean by intimate is anything from two to four feet, meaning that you could be with a stranger and you might, you might feel your uh, comfort zone is maybe two to four feet, maybe, maybe not. Then the um, social, the most social interaction that people have is anywhere from four to 12 feet. And then the public, if you're like a speaker or if you are in public, oftentimes 12 feet is a good measure of being away uh, from people. So if you are a facilitator, by the way, or a speaker, I always suggest people be at least six to eight feet so that you're not on top of each other and also that you're close enough to where you can connect with people. But just kind of notice, have, has your space grown or shrunk? And when you go to meet people and you reach a hand out or do I shake their hand? Do I hug them? What do I do? Have you been a little more cautious? A little other, bit? People, other people are cautious. I'm not cautious at all. Okay. <laughs> and right. But, but noticing, right, that some people are cautious. They're like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Definitely. So, right. So you're observing that and that's good. So. Uh, who who's heard of Bruce Lipton? Okay, so he's fascinating. He's come up with these really powerful um, concepts about open and closed systems and cells within your body. And he said that genes and your DNA, uh, they don't control biology, he said. Instead, DNA is controlled by signals from outside the cell including energy, the energetic messages emanating from a positive or negative thought. Isn't that, isn't that wild? This is the quantum field perhaps you've heard of, right? And a system can be either closed or open. And a closed system, even in the cells, a closed system is a system that is completely isolated from its environment. So have you been a closed system for a while? being completely isolated at times. An open system is a system that flows, that has information. Information flows to you, flows back and forth. Energy flows back and forth. Matter can flow back and forth. And it's between the system and the environment. That's what you're playing with when you're talking about these cells being open. And you're able to adapt to the exchange. So, the reason I brought that up is because they've proven a lot of this stuff in quantum physics and a lot of different areas about how your energy flows and that your thoughts create, that your thoughts have vibration, that your, your, your actual body has vibration, anything that's sentient has vibration. And so ask yourself, have you been, have you been closed or open? And can you tell the difference when you are? Okay, um, a lot of people are getting their exchanges like this through the screen. How effective is that? I mean, I'd rather do it this way than text and email because as you know, those of you any done any of my workshops or classes, it's only 7% of communication if you're just texting or emailing. You're not getting the whole picture. 38%'s tone, at least pick up the phone and get the tone, I would say, or, the body language is 55%. So at least we can see each other for most, most of us, right? 
Oh, there's Dr. Pat. Hi, she's coming to EOB finally after 100 years. Yay, I'm so excited. Anyway, all these people coming in. Thank you for joining us here. And remember, you do have it recorded so everybody will get this, okay? Um, so my, my point about this is sometimes we're, we've been living behind a screen and when we get out and we're with people, the energy changes and what do we do with that? And how do we manage that so it doesn't affect us in a strange way? And if maybe it brings up anxiety. I don't know. Maybe it brings up anxiety in other people. So how do you manage that? So getting permission. So that's called proxemics, by the way, for those of you who are note takers. Proxemics is the study of space. It's that spatial connection of space, of personal space with people, human space. Um, so sometimes social engagement right now, I feel like a lot of people in the past, certainly, and certainly now, can cause a little bit of PTSD. Have you experienced any of that? Like a social interaction of, I don't know how this is gonna work. I don't know if they really are wanting me to touch them and or what do I do if I touch and this is bringing up other emotions that I haven't felt in a while. Maybe not, maybe you guys are just all out there and there's no issues. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you questions <laughs> to see who we've created together in this vortex tonight, okay, or today. It was so nice just to come out and, and hug people, even if somebody yeah. don't, um, don't want to, but Excellent. I really love to be able to go out again. And I, I it, 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 it's very awkward because I'm just a hug and hi, and, you know, and just to get this pushback, is, it kind of, I, you know, I, oh, oh yeah, I can't do that. Like, it, it's very strange to me to, to, to be in this place, right? it's still awkward for me. It's just awkward because you, I have to read body language really fast and, and assess. Okay. Uh, no, this person wants my six, their six week. Is it six? Weeks, right, you know? Someone I don't know. I, I let them decide. I mean, I'm open, but I'm not yeah, going to throw my arms. I was thinking, there's even I'm, a fire. I love right people. I'm, I'm definitely a people person, but I would let the other one make the first. I extend my hand and uh, have been declined. So I said, that's good, you know, and continue smiling. Just roll with it. Great, anybody else? I would like to say, um, can I say, I don't hear. Um, I'm yeah, hearing, go ahead, Anna. Okay. I am surprised by your the space definitions because mine are much further out and always have been, has nothing to do with COVID. But um, mm -hmm. COVID was definitely a surreal situation for me being alone and recovering from a brain injury and car accident. So uh, still unfolding like the um, bloom and onion, if you will. Uh, some of that even uh, I don't know what else to say I wanted to address I uh, love the okay. uh, language that's coming through with this and just to comment working on the, the adaptation oh, yeah. yeah back up like that perfect mm -hmm. thank perfect. you yeah mm -hmm. no problem, those no two problem. Shops and, right there. Uh, Vanessa we can hear you honey if you're talking are you talking to us or you is that background Okay, so yeah, for some people, their definition of, of getting close or intimacy or their personal space, it's different for everyone. And how do you judge what's okay? You know, one of the things that I always do, and those of you who know me, you know I'm a hugger, right? And so what I always do anyway, and I still do this, is I open up my arms and I say to everyone, I'm a hugger, is that okay? And then you get to see what they say, you know, because you're asking permission, basically, at that point. I'm very direct. So there's no question. And it's not a matter of, even if it's a, in a business situation, I'm, I'm a hugger um, oftentimes. But you can feel energy. You can feel it if they're, if they're backing up a little bit or they're moving in toward you. Then you can feel if that's okay for you or not. So you don't have to change who you are for them. However, 
having empathy, which we're going to talk about, <laughs> is putting yourself in their shoes is, is helpful. Okay. So I, I ask for permission for the most part. If you're an essence of being graduate, I just hug you. So get, you know, just, that's what I do. Uh, so how to come out of your chrysalis into this new way of being in the world, right? So those of you who've heard me before talk about the eye of the hurricane. So we may perhaps, we've been in this hurricane of swirling chaos and all kinds of things perhaps that have just really been uh, interesting to deal with and a challenge at times. And you are the eye of the hurricane. If you can look at yourself as the eye, and I'm not talking about the eye where it's the little eye, I'm talking about the big eye. You're the big eye, you are connected, you are the center. If you allow other people to push you off your center or allow other people to um, knock you off your center for whatever reason, all you have to do is stand back up, is to stand up. And I mean that in a double entendre kind of way, is standing up. So if you dip down into the wind, you dip down from standing up, you're going to get hit perhaps with all the wind and the chaos and the swirling and the stuff that's flying around in the hurricane. And all you have to do is stand back up and then you're calm again. You're in center again. You're connected again. You are the eye. Okay. So if you look at perhaps how you're walking around in the world right now and showing up, don't be afraid that you've lost your connection. Okay. Sometimes you just forget. Sometimes you forget that you are in control of your own connection and your own centering. And so if there's been trauma or chaos or upset or whatever's going on around you, you have choices. You can, you can dip down into it and swirl around with everybody else, or you can stand in your own center and be the eye of the hurricane and be calm with it. And what I mean by that is, Instead of absorbing everybody's energy, you can observe it. So you can be the observer, observe their chaos and their trauma and their upset and all those things and observe that and not necessarily dip down into it. You don't have to be in it with them in order to have empathy and to connect. So for some of us, just tune into that center of who, who you are. That's the calming, connected, calm place, okay? Um, if you're an empath, those of you who know if you're an empath, those an empath is someone who feels a lot, right? Who feels other people's feelings. You're here, and again, this is a more esoteric um, call tonight, connection tonight, but as an empath, you're here to transmute other people's pain. That's why you came here, FYI. And you can take that on or not. It's totally up to you. It's your choice. But my point is a lot of people don't know their empaths. And so they, they feel everything. And because they feel everything, they get very overwhelmed. And they shut down, shut down their emotions, shut down the feelings, because it's hard sometimes to discern what is their emotion and what somebody else's emotions are. And so many empaths, if that's you, and you may not even know you are, many empaths will shut down or numb out or like to be isolated because it makes it easier. So you don't have to feel people, okay? And now remember, if you're with family or if you're with people that you love, and you know they push your buttons. As an empath, they're going to push your buttons. And any time, it doesn't matter if you're an empath or not. Family will push your buttons oftentimes. People that are very close to you. Agreed? Yeah? Why is that? The yes, joke. Bob? The joke I heard years ago is our parents know how to push our buttons because they were the ones who installed them. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I knew you'd come up with a gem. That's excellent. <laughs> so, yes, okay. And, and remember anybody that you're around when there's a lot of love present, everything unlike love comes up for the, 
purpose of healing. So in other words, when there's a lot of love present in your space with people, it, it pushes up. Love pushes up everything unlike love. Why? For the purpose of healing it. Whatever wounds or thoughts or feelings or trauma or whatever it is, it pushes everything up to heal it. And that's why when someone really knows us, it, it's a lot of love that's there, but it can push up and it come out sideways. It can come out ways that you don't expect it to. But it's there for you to look at, perhaps, to heal something. It brings things up for the purpose of healing it. And you have choices. You can heal it or not. And that why is that? Because we are projections for each other. We're mirrors. And so when you meet people and when you're with people, they're mirroring things, perhaps, that you don't want to see in yourself. So you get to look at, are they projecting on me or am I projecting on them? And am I absorbing that? Like that's what mine is and that's me. So this is all happening more than likely very subconsciously. You don't think about that when you're with your family or people. Okay. But they can trigger you because of that. Maybe with, when you're with people, you either get too tired because it's exhausting is that true for some of you? It can be exhausting for some. Or you get triggered uh, because of some kind of thing that they're reminding you of. Or maybe they're projecting their sadness or their anger or their upset onto you. And maybe you take it from them. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> That's up to you to decide. Uh, Excuse me, that's not mine. Okay, you, I, I hear you and I see you and I'm observing that you're upset, but I'm not taking that on. They may be guilt throwers. Maybe they're throwing guilt on you for something. But see, if you catch it, or maybe you're a shame catcher. You catch shame very easily. So if that is you, if you stop catching it, then they're going to start stop throwing it. Because it's not fun to play catch with one person. Okay. So you get to decide, okay, is that mine or is that theirs? And I'm not going to catch any guilt from them. I'm not going to go into shame about it. And you, you might be the one that's throwing. it. You might want to look at that too. You might be the one that's throwing the guilt, right? And they, maybe they catch it. So this, it's really interesting to kind of explore this and see how they show up and how you show up. So hold your shape. What I mean by that is hold your integrity. Buckminster Fuller talked about integrity as holding your shape, the, the integrity of steel. Don't, so if you let people push you off of your center, Okay, forgive yourself and go back to your center and hold your shape about what you know to be true for you. And hold your integrity. And you are the eye of the hurricane. I just want to keep reminding you. So some of the things you can say to yourself, if you're having a conversation with someone around your energy, or you meeting somebody, or maybe you do know, know them already, you want to ask yourself these questions. And I talk about this a lot in the essence of communication, but I'm going to throw it out here too. Okay. Ask yourself this in your head. Uh, will it serve to say it? If there's something you want to say to somebody, just ask yourself, will it serve to say it? Yes or no? Then you say, well, who is it going to serve? Me or them? And then how is it going to serve? And the biggest question to yourself, this can happen in, split set in like very quick seconds, you guys. The other thing to remind yourself is, is this the highest good for all concerned? If I say this, or if we're having this conversation, is this going to create the highest good for all concerned? And if people are, uh, get around you that piss you off, here's a tool. Look at them and choose to see their innocence. Look at them as a little kid. Just imagine them as what they looked like when they were five and six years old, four, five, six. 
like a little four-year-old? What do they look like? Just imagine them that way and see the innocence. Even though you're pissed off or even though they, they trigger you somehow. It's a really great way to reframe who you're talking to. Because if you look at them with their innocence, guess what? You can see your own innocence too. Because remember, we're mirrors. And innocence for a lot of people uh, can be challenging. They don't even understand what that means sometimes. Because when you were born, would you agree you were innocent? Yes or no? Just nod or... And those of you I can't see. I have an answer I, for I that. You. I, I, like that. I like to answer that question. Yes, yes. <laughs> answer, answer. You say, well, well, we was born, we was born innocent. Well, I have another take on that. We was born, we was born speaking lies because we came out crying and we, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> We came out crying for no reason. Is that what you said? Crying okay. and complaining for no reason. You just had to say something like that. <laughs> yeah. I understand. I understand. Uh, hey, girl, what's up? But How I will, are you doing, Deanne? But I will say, but I will say <laughs> that uh, I'm a birth doula and a death doula, and I'll say that the innocence that I see. When they're at when when a body when an energy or a soul is coming in and when they're going out it's the same energy, it's that purest form of connection, and it's fascinating to me because it's the same energy because I do both on both ends. Okay, and I will say that if you can access your own innocence, then you can see the innocence within someone else, perhaps. Okay. Um, so, because the opposite of innocence is guilt. And if you're vibrating, you guys know, for some of you have taken a lot of these classes, if you're vibrating guilt, you're demanding punishment because guilt demands punishment. And so you will vibrate that, that energy of, of guilt and you will self-sabotage because you are demanding punishment because you're guilty. This is all subconscious. You don't do this on a conscious level. So you'll either self-sabotage or you'll attract something to you that will punish you. So I suggest us just, again, tapping into our own innocence so that anytime we feel guilty about anything, it shifts that back to the innocent. And I can give you tools about that um, later. Now, let me talk about empathy, about managing your energy and having empathy, okay? If we can cultivate empathy and all em look at empathy as it is um, basically putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. And if you want to cultivate more compassionate relationships, having more compassion for yourself and for others, and yes, even your family, okay, having more compassion, those kind of relationships it takes several things. It takes empathy, which is putting them yourself in other people's shoes. It not taking it on, all right? Not absorbing it, but just observing it. Um, having ownership of your own beliefs, your own thoughts, your own emotions, knowing what those are, and respect. And what I mean by respect is you're respecting yourself and you're respecting others to make the decisions that are the highest good for all concerned. Maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't look that way to you. Okay. But you know, when you're raising children, we want to take care of them. And yet we want to have them learn their boundaries and learn what works and what doesn't. And that's respecting them. And a lot of us who are codependent, I'm a recovering codependent. I admit it. Okay. Those of us who are codependent, we want to take care of it for them. Let me, let me take care of it. And so what ends up happening is that it's somewhat of a disrespect to their own, um, their own uh, learning of what works for them because we're all sentient beings. Does that make sense? 
So having this compassion is really important, especially when we're re-emerging into society and we're meeting people or we're re-meeting people or we're connecting with people is understanding what is a compassionate relationship. You got to have those three, ownership of yourself, of what you're feeling and thinking, respecting yourself and others, and having empathy. Raise that empathy chip up. And oftentimes, if you've been by yourself for a lot, if you've been isolated, we forget that part. There's other people in the world and they're not us. They're not many me's. Okay. The other thing that we forget sometimes is when we walk into a room, um, let's say we want to turn on the light and it's a dark room and we turn the light on. Well, oftentimes what can happen when you turn a light on and all of a sudden you see roaches scatter and all the shadows come out. And so what do you do? Do you run? Do you just turn the lights off? So in other words, we all have a light within us. We all have a light that to turn on our energy, our compassion, our life force. When we're going out in the world, turn on the light. Guess what? Shadows will come up because you have your light on. Uh, you might even have roaches come out. This is a metaphor, obviously. Okay. <laughs> so you might have those come out. So what do you do? You turn the light back off. And then you turn it back on and you turn it back off. So it's turning your light force up and down. It can be exhausting. So my suggestion is just keep your light, keep your light shining, turn it up, and just know that the shadows are part of it. The shadows that come out within you, the shadows that come out within other people, they see your light. They may want you, they may feel jealous of your light, but that's not your uh, issue. Your, my, I'm challenging all of us to turn our light on, to turn it all the way up, to walk out into Whatever we do, face it with a connection that we know that cannot be turned off. That we have control over our own light, our own life force, our own passion, our own connection. We have control over that. And to be the demonstration to other people that don't know how to do it. And just know if somebody triggers you or you're with people now, and they feel strange or whatever, just they don't, they don't know what they don't know. And it's not your job necessarily to turn their light on for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we resonating with this? Okay. Good. Okay. And so again, we've had some breakdown in our lives. We've had a lot of breakdown with the world right now a lot of breakdown going on but just know that when you have breakdown and this is what we do in essence of being in all the other classes and programs and workshops play shops that we do is you have these breakdowns that you get to look at and use those breakdowns to break through to break through the other side there's another side to it all because what we mean by that is you're anything that's not working in your life right now we call that contrast and now you know what you don't want. So that contrast turns to clarity. That contrast moves you to clarity. You don't know, you know you don't want this. This is not it. So now you can turn and go, well, this is what I want. So contrast can be a gift to show us what we want, to give us clarity. And once we have clarity, then we have the power to do something about it. So all this stuff that's going on in the world right now, you can look at it all in your own world, in your own orbit, or in a global perspective. You can look at it all and say, this isn't working. But you look at that as contrast and say, okay, that's not what I want. What do I want? What, what am I choosing? What am I going to, what do I choose to create? That is the clarity and that clarity will lead you to power, that personal power of knowing that you can create whatever it is that you choose to have and to show up however you want. So breaking through is important because after that, it's all break free. It's 
So it's break down, break through, break free. Break down, break through, break free. Go. Okay. Does that make sense? And ever, I just. Uh, somebody's trying to speak, but I can't hear you. Away. Say it again. Oh, I got to go in the attic again. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Elizabeth, is that you? Elizabeth, you need to mute yourself. Huh? Yes. Uh, or I'll mute you. Let me just. Okay, she's going in the attic. Okay. All right. Don't you love Zoom? All righty. How are we doing, everybody? <laughs> doing good. Good, good, good. Okay. All right. Now, what I want to do is give us a couple of things about bringing parts of us back, our energy, because for some of us, maybe we just need to practice our empathy chip, or maybe we need to bring parts of us that have been missing back. And uh, what I mean by that is um, chakras, okay, our energy wheels in our body. We have many, many chakras. This comes from the Hindu um, and Eastern uh, philosophies about chakras but uh people talk about the seven chakras within, within the body there's actually a ton more there's chakras in your fingers there's and all it is there's chakras in your toes all it is is energy wheels in your body that are spinning they're energy wheels and connections within your body and so oftentimes the, our chakras can be influenced by the outside outside of us and those so they shut down they can't function as well so we want to, because sometimes there's leaks, okay? We have leaks in our chakras. And again, I told you this is a little esoteric and you don't have to believe any of this. It's okay. But just humor me that basically oftentimes part of us, especially those of us who have had loss in our life. And I know there's been a lot of loss right now with a lot of people in the world, okay? That sometimes... Parts of our soul, if you will, parts of our energy leaves and wants to go with them. And therefore, we may not feel all here. We may not feel all connected because parts of us are not even here. Because a little piece of us maybe went, okay, with other people who have passed through the veil, who have gone on to the other sides okay other dimensions so um this is a little technique i want to play with us it just just play with it and see you don't have to believe in it uh, it's okay but we're going to bring part of that life force back whether it's left or you know you don't know we're going to bring the life force back through our chakras everybody willing to play just play with it okay awesome all right uh all right so the, we're going to start with the crown chakra. And the crown chakra is this up here. It's up in this area up here. All right. And again, I'm not going to go. I'm going to do this very quickly because you'll get this recording. But this is something that you can do if you ever feel like you're not all here, that part of you is left, that your soul or your energy has gone somewhere and you need to bring it back. Okay. So we're going to bring the bring all of the parts of you back through your chakras and so the crown chakra is spirit okay so you can say this out loud or just to yourself i call my spirit back now i now retrieve my energetic field from whomever you can name names i now retrieve my energetic field from whoever you think you may have given it to or maybe somebody who's passed, maybe you just are holding on to a lot of stuff for people, not even knowing it. So you put per, you put the person's name there if you can think of who it is. Again, you can go back and listen to this, do this as we go through it, okay? All right, your third eye, which is this part right here. And it's your brow chakra. And you say this, I now choose to be conscious of every thought and word. I now choose to be conscious of every thought and word used to release power to, and put a name, who have you given your power away to? And then you say, I choose to release every time I have a disempowering thought. 
So I have an opportunity to choose a different thought or word and call my spirit back now. So again, you can go back and listen to this so you can say those out loud, but you're calling your spirit back that you've given your power to from your third eye. Your throat chakra, that's right in here. I call my spirit back now. I now make choices every day that empower me. I now choose to realize every time I say or choose something that causes energy to leave my system, I call my energy back home. So calling your spirit back now. And I apologize if I'm doing this too fast, but again, you can go back and listen. Heart chakra. That's right in here, your heart. I now consciously command my entire emotional center to alert me when I am losing vibration and consciously choose to make a different decision and call my spirit back now. And you might want to throw in there, I love myself. It's a good place to say it. Okay. The solar plexus is right underneath your rib cage here where your tummy is. That's your solar plexus. That's your power chakra. That's also where we store criticism, by the way. And say this, from now on, I choose to call my spirit back from any image, any attitude that makes me feel less than I am. I've had enough of that and I choose to be alert to every time this happens and call my spirit back now. Okay. And the second one is your sexual chakra, which is around your pubic bone in that area. By the way, your second chakra is your money maker. Those of you who've taken higher vibes, my other woo-woo class I take teach. All right. That's your sec that's your your sensual pleasure chakra, but it's also your money chakra. So I say every morning, wake up and shake your money maker. That's just an aside. Okay. Get the cobwebs out. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> I want to know every time I start losing energy over finances or other people or control issues, I now choose to be conscious of the slightest loss of energy in this area and to choose to call my energy, my spirit, my resources back now. Okay. Then we're going to go to the root chakra, which is um, below your pelvic bone. Okay. This is this is the the root. This is where safety, uh, the feeling of feeling safe, uh, lies. This is also tribal consciousness as well. It's where your, um, basically your life <laughs> uh, feeling safe lies there in that red root chakra. So you say, every time I feel unsafe within my tribal structure, I now choose to be alert to anything causing me to feel I'm about to have a tribal earthquake that will destroy my foundation. I choose to unplug and call my spirit back now. So be it. That's from Carolyn Mice. Okay. She calls herself Mace, Carolyn. Okay. 
So it's pulling all of that soul's leakage back, bringing it back, having your chakras spinning in the right direction, okay? Which we do a lot of toning and that kind of thing to do that in my other classes, okay? So it's good to pull that back so that you feel like your energy is all back and complete, so you feel more whole and complete. How does everybody feel at the moment? Good. Good. Okay, cool. So those of you who know, I have I channel Shamanasta, by the way, and Saturday I'm doing that. Again, I do it once a month live in, uh, on Zoom. Okay, it's happening this Saturday. But you could go to, uh, if you're into that kind of thing, you can go to shamanasta.com and check it out. And I'm putting all that in the uh, chat there for Essence of Being, which I don't do that in a lot of the classes. This is very special. But they, uh, they are, by the way, we're all channels. We all have the ability to connect to source, to God, the universe, whatever you want to call spirit. Okay. And we all have these abilities to be able to bring in information. We all just do them perhaps differently and just learning how to cultivate them. But one of the things that they talk about is about feeling separate with your energy. So I thought I would share what they said about this because that's what we're talking about. Is that cool? All right. So if you're ever feeling separate, when you're feeling separate from your physical body, sometimes like when you're not all there and you're just feeling separate or isolated, there's a part of you that is feeling the futileness of being in this physical space and wanting to have one toe in one space and one in the other. I don't know. Maybe you felt that way before. Maybe you're like not sure where you are these days. Again, it is also the feeling of the old time paradigm and the new time paradigm and not knowing how to live in either one at this moment, which I feel like is true for a lot of us because we're, we were in isolation or we were in this space of maybe fear and anxiety was really, really up for people. And now, now what do we do? So therefore, it's easier to check out. It's easier to check out of this existence in a way that's not bringing your passion or bringing you feeling at all because you're not even there. In other words, many of us don't want to feel things because we don't want to feel separate. We don't want to feel lonely. We don't want to feel unwanted or not important. So we just shut down all the feelings. But what happens is that if you shut down your feelings, you're shutting down your intuition and your inspiration and your passion. And so where do you find those if you're shutting all that down, right? Good question. So you have choices. Here are the choices. What can you do? What you can do is you can either go ahead and keep your feet in the past or keep your feet in the new paradigm. You do not know which way to step sometimes. There's an aching that you have and a longing of wanting to connect and be a part of something, people, but feeling the futility perhaps of doing so. Therefore, your inner guidance will direct you as to which way you would like to flow. You may flow in the guidance of trying to make it work the way it has in the past by writing things down or journaling or visualizing, visioning your passions, those types of things that we Many, most of us have done, perhaps, when we're trying to get clear. And moving towards your passion and finding things that make you feel good and all those things. Those of the old time paradigm. What we suggest, perhaps, you can do now is to step into the new paradigm and the new involvement of humankind. And what that is is opening up the part of you that has been shut down in a sense and has certainly been awkward recently, but has not been fully developed, which is 
your abilities to see and know and hear things that can cause great harmony within your inner being. Do not look for the external parts to make yourself feel good. In other words, not looking for something else to make you feel good so that you may feel your own passion. What we suggest is trusting your abilities, trusting your knowing in a way that you may be inspired to action. In other words, do not do anything unless you're inspired to do it. Trust the inspiration that it will flow easy from you and that all things come to you as you are inspired. We are suggesting follow your internal guidance. Follow the ability that you have to tune into your highest self. And from that place, you take action. And from that place, you create all that you want. From that place, you also feel passion. Can you see the difference between getting up because you have to and getting up because you want to? Do you feel the difference in doing that? Somebody has a phone call. So there is a different energy, by the way, flowing around that. So therefore, many of you, speaking of practicalities, you may say, well, we cannot do that. We cannot just make plans and thwart them because we don't feel like doing it. It feels irresponsible. And what we say around that is do not make the plans in the first place unless you feel inspired to do so. This is a test that you can play with. If it feels uncomfortable for you, do it on the days that you do not feel that it is a matter of life or death or it's a matter of income producing days. Do it on an off day. And if that makes you feel more empowered with the process, try it from there. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yes. So it's a new paradigm. It says a new way of getting in touch with and experiencing who you are. It is one of allowing your intuition to guide you as opposed to your logical senses. Cool. Okay. Any questions about that? Got a question. Yep. Which of those days are the ones where your life's not at stake? And um, what was that other thing you said? It was two. Income producing. Like if Income you have to go to producing. work. So which yeah. of those days are those? Uh, are you asking me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday. Uh, <laughs> is it a Saturday? Okay, really? <laughs> what, 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 they're, what they're saying is if it feels <laughs> uncomfortable or it feels irresponsible about, uh, you know, not making plans unless you're inspired to do so, do it on a day or a time period that maybe mm -hmm. you're on vacation. Maybe you're having to make decisions about where to go to eat as opposed to where you're going to get your mm -hmm. next, you know, where you're going to make money next. Okay, well, they were saying life producing or not and um uh what was the other one income producing or life <laughs> income like, producing like if you're life. trying to make a decision which yeah. is a, like if well i mean know, even if, if it's a minor it decision like about death. where you're where you're gonna go eat that could be income producing or life life decisioning i don't know i'm confused excuse me thank you it was okay. very good mm -hmm. okay <laughs> <laughs> So what I want to do, thank you, Deanna, uh, it's just so that you don't, it's, it's just practicing. You can do it on just for a little bit. You know, you don't have to do a whole day of it, but it's just basically making decisions through inspiration. Okay. That could also manage your energy. The thing I want to share, I've got a little meditation for us, and then I want to give us some tools really quick. Um, let me give you the tools first, and then I'll do the uh, meditation to, to play us out, so to speak. Okay. So a couple of tools that I use for managing my energy. If you're about to go into a situation, like Mary was talking about, she's going to go on vacation with her family. And you know that perhaps you are going to have there could be a possibility of confrontation or uncomfortableness, okay? There's a technique that I use called mirror up. And what that means is you imagine yourself inside a mirror 
and you say to yourself, mirror up, and you, it takes like less than 10 seconds. You imagine yourself 360 degrees inside a mirror. Now our thoughts create reality. And if that's true, then you have the power to do this, okay? So you're inside the mirror and the mirror is on the outside. The mirror part is facing out. So you're inside at 360 degrees and anything that comes at you, any energy, any words, anything that kind of kind of comes at you that you feel like you just don't know how to manage and it's not yours anyway and they're, you're afraid of it or you just don't want to be around it, you can, it bounces off of you. Basically, it doesn't come into your emotional space because you're inside this mirror, this protection, this seal of, of, of you could call it protection. But you imagine it, and that's the way that you can observe instead of absorb. And this really works. It's kind of cool that you can just say mirror up. And anything that comes at you bounces off of, bounces off of your mirror, and it goes to the divine light. You just, it just goes to the divine light, goes to the divine light. It doesn't come into your space where you have to, quote, deal with it on an emotional uh, way where it knocks you off your center. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's a really great, especially if you're going into a group of people or family, situation, whatever, just have your mirror up. Question, Vanessa? Sorry, you had your hand up. Huh? Yeah. Is this similar to like tapping? Because tapping, I think, is also it's, for it's not getting rid as, of negative. Yeah. The energy. tapping, tapping, like EFT tapping, you mean? Yeah. Tapping, EFT tapping is another technique you can use. That is more about releasing the um, energy within you or the emotional parts within you, okay, that is feeling stuck or you don't know how to release or you're wanting to shift, okay? That's more about you. The mirror is more about anybody else coming at you. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe that's why it has been working. I'm tapping away. And it's, it's from someone else. I'm going to do the mirror thing. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you've allowed it to come into your space, into your emotional body, and you're feeling it, yeah, then you want to, you can tap it out for sure. That's the meridian. It's, it's another technique you can use. Um, but there's a lot of techniques you can use to release those types of things. Okay. But what I'm talking about is managing your energy so that you can learn and discern how to be with people and not run away how to be with people and not shut down, okay, is to just try the mirror thing. Don't try it, just do it, yeah. There is no try, there is only do and not do, okay? So that's from Yoda, okay. So that's one to tool. The sec another tool that you can use is, there is a tapping that you can do. And this tapping is tapping right here, on your forehead, I'm sorry, that's wrong. I'm doing FT, I'm sorry. Is tapping right here, right, right below this little uh, neck hole here. You wanna tap right underneath of it and then you tap right above your belly button. And you can say this now if you choose to. This is for any time that you feel like you've got, uh, that you've attracted and atta you have attached energy. Attached energy means it could be attached energies from everywhere dimensionally speaking it could be attached energies from klingons what i mean by that is other people's energy perhaps that you feel you've absorbed somehow and you might feel heavy you might feel sluggish you might feel full okay you might feel fog brain there's a lot of ways that can give you a, a heads up that you might have taken on somebody else's energy that's not yours okay so you tap here and you tap above your uh, belly button and you say this, any energy that is not mine must leave my body now. I send you to the divine light now. I am the master of my domain now. Take a breath. Now, what happens is 
you might feel a little lightheaded. You might feel a little bit lighter because what you're doing is you're releasing any energy that's not yours. And it could be a lot of different kinds of energies, either from people or other energies that aren't people, like dimensional beings or who, you know whatever your belief system is about that. I'm not going to go there okay, right now. But it's all about letting go of anything that's not yours. So it's a very quick, down and dirty kind of a thing you can do. And if you still, if you don't feel something kind of like releasing or leaving your body, you can do it again. But again, you can say any energy that is not mine must leave my body now. I send you to the divine light now. I'm the master of my domain now. Okay. And you take a breath. <sighs> All right. Those are two little tools I just gave you that uh, could help you and support you in managing your energy. Okay. So that you're not absorbing other people's energies unconsciously. Because a lot of people do this unconsciously. They don't even know they're doing it. Okay. So any questions about any of that? <clears throat> a true empath can heal by taking that process. By absorbing the painful energy from the other person and then dissipating that energy through their own abilities. Yes. It's painful. There's a way to, you're right. And there's a way to do that where it doesn't affect the impact. So the issue sometimes or the challenge sometimes is when, it, when you are consciously doing that as an empath and releasing it. Remember what I said? I don't know if you were on the call then, but I said that empaths are here to transmute other people's pain. That's what they're here. That's what some of their gifts are that they can do. Okay. However, there's a way to do that where it doesn't have to affect you physically and emotionally. So the empaths don't have to absorb it necessarily to heal it. Okay. And if, if uh, there's a lot of different techniques, so it just depends. If it's affecting you in a way where you're doing that work and you're uh, releasing other people's emotions and helping them and transmuting their pain, that's great. If it's affecting you, then there are other ways that you can do that without it affecting you is all I'm saying. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I have a question. Yes. My question is, okay, when you get ready to do those types of things, exercises, I notice you use certain words. Do you have to be particular on the words that you use? Because you may not, I may not remember all the words you use, but as long as the words are synonymous, and positive in that way. Is that okay? Because otherwise, do you have a list that we I do? I have that we can yes. use so we get yes. used to. Okay. That's yes, that saying. particular one, it's a great question. That particular one is very specific about what you say. Uh, however, I'm imagining that if you are choosing to release anything and you're saying it in a way that makes sense to you, that that would work too, <laughs> I'm assuming. But this this particular thing was given to me. Um, and those specific words, and it's very quick. And again, I can put it in the chat, but it's basically any energy that is not mine must leave my body now. I send you to the divine light now. And you have to say divine light. Because if you don't, if you say, I, uh, I choose to, for you to leave my body, go to the light, we're all light. So the energies can <laughs> jump into all kinds of light. So you want to say divine light. okay? And I'm the master of my domain. So you're basically owning the thought. The, you're owning it and you're saying what I say goes. Yeah. And then I always say now. So it's not. So it's immediate. And then I take a breath, which helps dissipate. And. It's like an exclamation point when you breathe. I, I understood that that when you when you when you do that, it whatever it is has to leave because you command it. It, it cannot stay. That's what I understood. Correct. That That's why I say you want to say those specific words in that particular thing. You're commanding any energy to leave. Yeah. 
Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to come back. That doesn't mean that you're not going to attract more of the same, depending on how you're playing with energy. But that's a whole nother. Did you come do Higher Vibes, Gail? I don't remember. Were you there? We just did it in Texas, Higher Vibes. No, okay. We're doing it again, by the way, in August. So Higher Vibes is, uh, we're doing it in June in Atlanta, and we're doing it in um, Texas in August. And that's where you learn all that stuff. Okay. That's, and you learn all your gifts and how to manage your gifts. Okay. So I didn't get to do the uh, meditation because it's over time, but I wanted to make sure that you got the tools. Okay. Um, to do that. But I invite all of you come play with me in Essence of Being next weekend. You can, uh, this Saturday is Shamanasta. If you want to, if you're curious about, it, if you have any questions for, fifth dimension and beyond kind of things that's happening Saturday, uh, 10 to 12 Eastern standard time. And I, I put in the chat, the sites, shamanasta.com and essenceofbeing.com. And you can just look on, you can go to essenceofbeing.com and just look at all this stuff coming up. We got a lot of things happening. Go to Italy with me in May. We're doing a spiritual retreat there. We still have room for some people. If you want to come to Italy with us, and also um, our graduate level work. Uh, we're doing our mastery program this year. So it's, uh, it's exciting. So check it out. Go to essenceofbeing.com. And I apologize. I didn't get to the um, meditation, but that's okay. I just want to honor our time commitments. And next, we do this the third Wednesday of every month. Next April 19th is the next one. And we're going to be, uh, our topic will be how to deal with fear and anxiety. Just put it in the bag and throw it outside. Okay. Just kidding. Oh, hi. I'm, it's the Millers. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for joining me. And like I said, I, I'm looking forward to playing with you guys. We've got a lot of experiences for you to connect with and manage your energy with. So please come play with me. And I hope to see you, Marcella. Patricia. Patricia. Pat's coming. Dr. Pat's coming. You can come play with us. And any of you come play with us next weekend, come to Italy with me in May, higher vibes, we got a lot of stuff. So until then, what you focus on expands, everybody. Woo, woo. All right. Woo. We'll do a meditation next time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye, everybody. Watch your email. You're going to get this recording. Okay. okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Howie and Lee, bye bye. <laughs> and Arlene and Marla. <laughs>